a sound heart. That word sound in the Hebrew comes from a root word which means peaceful or mend, I'm sorry, means to mend as in stitching. It means to cure, to heal, repair. It literally means physician. And so the Bible in Proverbs, is, he's saying a healed, mended, whole, wholesome. And it's also, it means a yielding heart, which is so important to the Lord, isn't that right? A yielding heart. But it means wholesome, mended, cured. So you can take all of those and apply them as we, um, uh, as he, he, he desires us to. And the thought here was, yes, there's a need to heal the heart, but the heart that is sound and cured, it affects in a positive way the physical body. In the same way that a sound, cured, wholesome heart can affect this physical body, the flesh here meaning body, the uncured or unwholesome heart will affect the body in a negative way. Does that make sense? And he makes, it, he, in the next part of the statement, he said, but envy, the rottenness of the bones. So envy is a condition in the heart, right? And so he says this envy, basically it rottens the bones, dries it out. Proverbs 4. I'm going to read these scriptures here. And it will, uh, so I want you to be thinking with me. Uh, uh, the goal now is not only soul healing, but to heal the physical body of ailments. But if, if, if healing is going to remain, if I get a healing in my physical body, if, 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 if I'm going to keep it, I'm going to stand on the word. But also, as he cures any ills in my soul, right, then the door is not open for the enemy to attack my body, right? Yes, yes. All right, just meditate on that. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 through 22. Look, look what he says here now. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear to my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For or because they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh or health or healing to all their bodies. Everybody with me? The words, health to all their flesh and healing or to the whole body. Now we look at Proverbs 4 and look at verse 10. It says, Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings. I love this one. And the years of thy life shall be, what? Many. Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of of your life shall be many. Matthew 4, 4 says, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Move on a little to Proverbs 17. Proverbs 17. 
Verse 22 says, a merry heart do it good like a medicine. A merry heart do it good like a medicine. But a broken spirit dryeth the bones. A merry heart do it good like a medicine. But a broken spirit dryeth the bones. God has a remedy for us. And that remedy is Jesus Christ. The Bible says, I was looking at Proverbs 28. Let me see what that says. I laughed at that. In verse 26 says, He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. But whoso walketh wisely shall be delivered. God's precious word is what we need. A soft answer or gentle reply, response that is, turns away anger or wrath. But grievous words stir it up. What do you mean? Someone says something to hurt you or make you angry. If you say something with um, not gentle response, but an angry response, it stirs up more anger, right? So he's saying a, a gentle answer or a soft answer. Turns away wrath. That means if somebody says something to you bad, and if you reply gently, it turns away their anger. They have no defense. They can't just go back with another punch because you brought that down through your response. You responded gently. A soft answer turns away wrath. All right, now these scriptures, especially the one he says, a sound heart, a peaceful, a tranquil heart. A heart that's at peace is a life of the flesh. How many times do we go to the physician and uh, the doctor's trying to find out why the pressure's up? And he can't really find any real source. Psychosomatic. There's some things is more than just the physical, right? Comes from the emotions of the soulish realm. And so, doctor said, well, I, I don't know why, you know. Then he turns around and asks this question, are you, are you stressing? <laughs> you might ask him, well, what's stressing got to do with this condition? Even doctors know, right? And so, but when that heart is at peace. Look what Isaiah said in Isaiah 53. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Wow. Yet we did esteem him stricken and smitten of God and afflicted, but he was wounded. Our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And with his stripes, oh, I feel the touch of God. Mm. We are healed. And with his stripes, we are healed. Look at what Jesus did in light of Calvary. Matthew 9. It says, verse 35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching 
in their synagogues and preaching the good news or the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Somebody say Jesus. In light of Calvary, the lamb, the sacrificial lamb, came, and as he came to men to heal, to make whole, Romans 5, 12 said, by one man sin entered into the world, the door to sin was through the, the door of, of death came through sin, isn't that right? Sin entered by one man and death came by way of sin. So now, death, sickness, disease, they all came because of sin. And Adam, yes, thank you, right? Well, if that be true, its true remedy is in what? It's in Jesus, isn't that right? It's in the atonement. It's true remedy. It's in the atonement. Not in you and I. It's in the atonement. My God. Yeah, they've known for years many conditions in the physical body can be a result of certain conditions in the soul. Ulcers may come from worries, right? Excessive worries. Arthritis can come from hate or guilt. Those are some of the things. I don't know all the details. Uh, but migraines can come from deep-seated anger. You know, just so many things. These are some of the things that the Lord has told me over the years. And uh, they've got some of the others that have learned certain things. But the point that I'm making is this. A sound heart. A heart at peace. A heart that's healed. In the life of this physical body. If I have prolonged things in my soul or conditions in my soul, over a period of years, if I don't deal with it, it will start causing my physical body to deteriorate in some manner. What are you saying? We have a remedy, right? It's through Jesus Christ. So you see how good God is? He wants to make us whole. He came for that reason. And it's free. It doesn't cost you anything but faith. Isn't that right? It's free. And so God said he wanted to heal today physically. But he was just kind of touching me to point out the need for healing of the soul. So in the year of Jubilee, Leviticus 25 was a time of restoration. Somebody said Restoration. Seven sevens, 49 years. The 50th year was called the year of Jubilee. And during that year of Jubilee, God told Moses to tell the people, every man's going to go back to his possession. And during the time of suffering, during those years, sometimes hardships would come and they couldn't, uh, you know, they'd sell their land to try to survive and, you know, or sometimes they were in bondage as a result of the things that they went through. But in the 50th year was a year of release when God says every man be restored whoever he had. Anybody catching that yet? The 50th year, not because anything that man did, the 50th year was the year that God designed for release and restoration for all of the, their possessions. And so 
Every man would turn, go back to his own possessions. The thing that he had to give up, he's restored now. Look at somebody say restoration. <laughs> Hallelujah. Two things happened during that time of, uh, on the Day of Atonement. The first thing was the atonement itself, the sacrifice. The second thing was the announcing of the year of Jubilee. The sounding of the trumpet. Are you still with me? First the atonement, right? Then the sounding of the trumpet. That this is a year of release. Pointing to the gospel. Y'all hear me? The atonement of Christ was the first thing. The second thing was the proclaiming of the good news of Jesus Christ saying all that was lost, restoration is for you now. Are you with me? So he's basically saying, now there is healing for the body and the soul. And so that's why Jesus, that's exactly what he did. He healed the body and he healed the soul. Everywhere he went, he healed the sick, and he healed the soul. And Christ atoned for all of our sins. And if it's true, and it is, that by one Man, sin came upon the whole of creation, right? Then by one man, Jesus Christ, all who believe in this gospel and receive the blessings of God. Look at somebody say, not of works, lest any man should boast. Isn't that right? That's why the example of the prodigal son frustrated the scribes and Pharisees because all they knew was you had to be righteous in yourself. You had to do and give this righteousness. But one of the things that I like about the New Testament is Jesus is imparting righteousness. Glory to God. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? You cannot make yourself righteous. It is a gift. It is a gift. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? It is a gift. From God. Look at somebody say, now receive his blessings. Give him some thanks and praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The healing is the children's bread. Healing. Is the children's bread. Now I'm preaching the gospel. And if you have a condition in your body. It can leave while I'm preaching. I've had people to come back and tell me. While you were preaching the gospel. The Lord healed me. So I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not surprised. Why? Hallelujah, because the Bible says the Lord working with them confirming his word, right? As I preach this gospel, then he confirms his word. So some of you, somebody may be getting the healing while I'm preaching today. Because the Lord works with us as we proclaim his word. God is so good. God is Dynamite. Oh, I feel good in saying that. Hallelujah. 
Glory to God. And I had a occasion where I was fretting about something. And I said, you know, I said, Lord, I don't need to be fretting. Can you just remove this? And here he come. So beautiful. Oh, my God. I said, Lord, you are just magnificent. God, I thank you for your goodness. I, I, my, when I grew up in my, uh, my, my parents, we couldn't do too much on Sunday but go to church. But nowadays, Paul said, one man esteemed one day above the other, right? But he said, another man may esteem every day alike. Well, I esteem every day alike. So that means I'm not bound and not being able to do this on Sunday. So I went up there, long story short, to run my car through the wash. And uh, it just, while I was in prayer, it kind of came to me. Because I've been trying to get to it, and it looks like everything in the world. So I don't want to go to church with my car all dirty. You know, it's not a big thing. But anyway, you know, just, just me. That's just me. <laughs> so anyway, while I was praying, a little thought just popped in my head. So I was, after I finished some prayer, jump, head up, headed over there. I had a little less than twenty dollars in my account. I thought I had about twenty dollars. So anyway, no, I'm not poor now. Listen, God, He already done that. But I'm just telling you something so you can think about it. So I go up there and plug it into the little wash, and it said decline. I said, Ah, I done drove all up here. I don't know. Da, da. So I said, okay, no problem. I had $6 in my pocket. All right, I'm going. I'll just go and watch it myself. You know the little wand? So I said, I'll do that. So um, I had a dollar. I was going to vacuum the, vacuum the uh, car. I'm sharing this so that you can see how much God loves us. So I went there to put the dollar in there and get a little token. In the, and out came about 15 of them. So the guy that runs the uh, machine, the uh, car wash, he was sitting there with the door open. He was sitting in the door. I said, whoa, look at this. And, so, and he said, what's the matter? And I grabbed all the things. I, I said, look, look. I said, I, all these things come falling out. He said, what in the world? He said, how much money do you put in there? I said, I put a dollar in there. And I gave him all of them but the one token. And he said, wow, thanks, man. And so, uh, so but I needed two. Actually, so I was getting ready to go. He said, here, take this. Here's two for being honest, you know, so. And I said, God is good. God is magnificent. He, he loves you so much. A lot of times we, we, we may have little things that we're concerned about momentarily, and you think, oh, well, God ain't into that. Look, God is with you. He is so awesome. And if he's concerned about a little thing, how much more does he want to heal you? Oh, my God. God is so great. I wish I could tell you how good he is. He's been so good. I said it before, but I enjoy saying it. He said, you're going to live long. <laughs> mm. Every time I think about that, God, I thank you. God, most of my friends are gone. Do you hear me? But the Lord said, you're going to live long and enjoy the fruit of your labor. Hallelujah. Mm, mm, mm. I'm so grateful to God today. He's been so good. I just want to encourage your heart today. Just live for God. You know, don't fret. Don't fret your life away. Just enjoy God. Enjoy your life. Isn't that right? One man, my, my pastor used to say it all the time, there's only one life and it'll soon be past. Only what's done for Christ will last. Oh, he's good. I just, I want you to know 
that if you are suffering in your body, God wants you healed. He wants you well. He wants you well. No, don't put a bunch of works or guilt before him. Don't put that before God. Don't insult him. Just believe that he cares for you. He loves you. He makes he wants to make you whole. Well, the stipulation. You gotta let go of these things that's you know, causing or that's blocking. You're healing, right? If somebody hurt you, just let them go. Let them go. You'll be the bigger one. You'll be the bigger one. Let it go. Love people. Isn't that right? Love people. Let's love one another. That's John's cry. Beloved, love one another. Because love is from God, and God is love. Somebody's going to get healed today. And you may be healed while you're just listening to the word, the gospel, the time of jubilee, time of res restoration. And uh, we had a, a friend that... Um, had no relationship with their father. And after a time of ministry, God healed her, brought her father back, and now they have a wonderful relationship. Restoration. Restoration. So sometimes God wants to heal so that relationships can be restored. You heard the testimony of our sister. Since we're on TV, she may not want me to call her name, so I won't call her name just last week. Testifying how God healed her, right? Saints, this is what God wants to do. And he's not mad about it. He enjoys every bit of it. He wants to make you whole. He's happy. When you're happy, he's a loving savior. Will you let him? Will you let him do it? Will you let go of the things that's been there for 10, 20, 30, 40 years? Will you let him go? What about if he want to do a deep healing? Would you, will you let him? The Bible says vain is the help of man. Jesus says, God says, I alone can save. Before me, I love this. There was no God formed. That's what he says. And he said, beside me, there's not coming another app. I'm it. I alone save. You may be here today and you may need a miracle from God. He's in the miracle business. God heals. I tell you about healing and then I'm done. Healing is good to the soul. You've never felt better in your life than when you allow God to go to those deep places in your life where there's pain for years. One lady that wrote a book, and you, she's a very popular lady. She wrote a book and she was talking about uh, the roadblocks. One was avoidance. She avoided being healed. She avoided the subject, avoided anything that made uh, her, uh, uh, reminded her that she needs to be healed. Years. Just messing up relationships everywhere. And, and finally, it, they, it, it happened so that somebody, she went and heard a testimony, and that person's testimony was so like her life. And she didn't know that this person was going to give a testimony. Otherwise, she would have never came. This is what she said. Just avoidance. Just avoidance. Hurting, but avoiding anything like it. And so finally, her husband bought, a, bought that book from that person. So she was reading the book, and her husband wasn't home. She was reading the book, 
and she was describing in detail the abuse that happened to her. She got mad. She took the book and threw it across the room. I'll not read this, she said. Affordance. Yet the pain was there. So she had to face the fact that she needed to forgive and let God heal that pain. Now, this person is national and internationally known because she let God go there. Some of you may have the potential to go national or international, and you may be struggling with a pain that you won't let go. I want to encourage you, you that are listening to me by way of television, you may be carrying a pain that's been there so long and you've been avoiding it, blaming others, running from it, shutting it down. But if you will stop and face it and let God be God in your life, you will be the better for it. God will take your life and he'll use you like you've never dreamed before. Healing is the children's bread. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for your son, Jesus. He came to love to heal and forgive. He bled and died all for my pardon. There's an empty grave to show that he still lives. Jesus, you're in this place. I honor you today. And I ask you to take control now and heal your people. Glory. Somebody lift your hands. Lift your hands to Jesus Christ. He's here. I sense the anointing increasing in this place you've been through pain but Jesus is the solution what he did on Calvary now he's ever making an intercession for his people now the Holy Spirit is to bring us into the fullness of the benefits of Calvary Jesus is here. I want you to stand with me, if you will. I ask the praise team to come and just begin to sing that which George is playing. Yes, 
if you will, the healer. You've got to do is bring on, bring on your hurts, bring on your pain. The healer is Why don't you let Jesus heal you today? Let Jesus heal. to pray for those by way of television. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for your precious son. Thank you for the love that you have for your people that are listening to this broadcast. And now, Lord God, minister to their needs. You know what they stand in need of. We honor you today. Send the help that only comes from you. In the precious name of Jesus. Glory to God. There's a relationship that God's going to restore. There's someone listening to me by web television. And this relationship, you've been desiring this thing to be changed. But the Lord has heard your prayer. And I want to tell you that the Lord says he's going to break the yokes that hinders that relationship and he will restore it for you whoever you are you'll feel the witness of the spirit you lift your hands now and give him praise hallelujah and believe and it shall surely come to pass thank you father I hear the Holy Spirit speaking to a mother and daughter relationship where your relationship has been estranged and you haven't been speaking for months, maybe even a year, and the Lord wants to restore and heal that relationship. The Lord said, if you will forgive and release, I shall restore. Halorobosanda. I have the power and I can do what you can't do in your strength, says the Lord. But if you will simply release them now, the Lord said he will bring the restoration. Relieve yourself of guilt. Oh, glory about the relationship the Lord said I shall restore not many days from here saith the Lord God bless you somebody has a crooked spine and the Lord says he's literally going to heal he's going to straighten that spine up and uh, Father I thank you for healing that crooked spine now by the power of your spirit I thank you I release this word unto them now. The healing flow by your divine power and your grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we're giving you the praise right now. Somebody has a back problem that the pain is very excruciating. And the Lord is healing. There's virtue going out right now to heal you of that back pain. Lift your hands and give God glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. 
I heard the Lord say, tuck your back in that area and receive the healing. Hallelujah. Don't think about how long it's been, how painful it is. Just believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the person that has the curved spine, I heard the Lord say scoliosis. But it's a severe case of scoliosis and God is going to straighten out that spine miraculously. You might feel a pain, but it's the healing virtue of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you. Somebody, you've got a pain running up and down your leg, God says. And that pain is very severe and it's making you nervous and afraid. But God is healing that pain now, whoever you are. Thank you, Father. I give you praise and I give you glory for healing, Lord God, and correcting that, stopping that pain now, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Come on, let's give God praise. Thank you, Lord. It's one other situation that I feel. Somebody's got an ulcerated stomach. You're going to go back to the doctor and you're going to find yourself that you're healed. The pain is going to stop everything. God is healing you. Claim it right now. You feel the witness of God. Got the ulcerated stomach. God is healing you right now. Father, I thank you. I give your name to praise in Jesus' name. Everybody, come on, let's give God praise for you. At the last minute, I heard the Holy Spirit said, He's healing. Congestive heart failure. And people's body with conditions in their heart. God said, trust him for it. And receive it. For it's by spirit, said the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody suffering with a neck that's been stiff for some days, a few days, and the Lord is healing. And you just move, you begin to move your neck, and you're going to find that the pain is gone. God's broken that off your life. Father, I thank you right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.